Somewhere in the Philippines, there is a 107-year-old woman named Wang Ode who is the last remaining tribal tattoo artist of her kind. She gets her needles from trees, her ink from charcoal, and her beading stick from bamboo. I am on a mission to meet the legend herself and discover a part of the Philippines that you may not know existed. It is 6 a.m. We are getting ready to go on an adventure of a life to meet Wang Ode. Deanna and I are joined by our driver, G, and our camera guy, Mike. None of us have ever been all the way up north in the Philippines before, and the 15-hour journey into the mountains to get there is gonna be insane. We've made it to the highest point in the entire country of the Philippines on any highway. 7,400 feet high, right here. Check this out. See on the bathroom here, they charge five pesos if you pee and ten pesos if you poop. Be honest. <laughs> I only peed, I only no poopy. <laughs> only pee. Thank <laughs> you. Don't fall. I'm not. I'm good, good. I'm not, I got you. You're not gonna fall. You can just see the views behind me are stunning. It's this massive green valley of rolling hills and mountains. It seemingly goes on forever. The Philippines continues to impress every time I come here, anywhere I go in this country. As you can see, the Philippines is not only beaches, coconut trees, and hot sunshine. The mountain region here is tribal and feels something like Sapa Valley in Vietnam or northern Laos. There is one special destination along the way that I've been wanting to see for years. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it's known as the eighth wonder of the world. The Banawe Rice Terraces. This place is actually on the 20 peso bill. It's so famous. Legend has it that centuries ago, the Ifogao people were carving these steps. And it's just so charming and peaceful up here. Breathtakingly beautiful, the rice terraces are truly a miracle of engineering. Seeing nature tamed and organized so delicately and precise by humans is quite the experience. So you're an Ifogao tribe? Yes, you are Ifogao. How, how old are you? 89. 89? This is the rice terrace, but the Ifugao people make this? Yes, the people make the feel it. She says she doesn't know Tagalog, the, the national language of the Philippines. Only English and Ifugao language? Yes. And she has this beautiful feathers in her hair, and we're overlooking the absolutely incredible Banawe rice terraces. Do you know who Wang Od is? Kalinga. Yeah, Kalinga. She does Kalinga. a ta tattoo. Not only is Wangod famous around these parts, but the entirety of the Philippines and the whole world. As the oldest person ever to be on the cover of Vogue magazine, she started tattooing in her youth after learning the skills of her father, a master in the region. Wangod is truly a feminist icon, having shattered the tradition of men being the only ones allowed to practice the art of tribal tattooing. Her technique is called batok, the traditional hand tap tattooing which is far more painful than modern methods. But the most surreal part about all of this is that Wangod has no children, which means after she's gone, this type of tribal tattooing will become totally extinct. We headed deeper into the mountains, and after hours of driving, we ended up in a charming Filipino town. We're just arriving here in Sagada. Really, really cool looking place. There's a huge flea market here on the street, and the people are just very nice and humble, and they have this distinct look. Certainly doesn't feel like anywhere I've been in the Philippines. Behind me, you can see all this fresh produce, and all these vegetables and fruits are grown locally. This is the biggest city here. It's kind of like the hub in this province, so all the nearby villagers kind of come here. There are numbers in there, and then when you pick one, you're gonna win something or not. It's like bingo? No, it's My a five, draw block. 91. Oh, that's so funny. That's sad. Uh, okay, guys, you all try. This is hilarious. You pick a number and yeah. then you win a prize. Four. Two. Here. Thank you. Ate. 322. It's almost like those scratch off cards that they have in the US. Yay! I got stickers. What do you win? A sticker and a necklace. Hmm. We're stopping to buy a jacket because it's going to be cold tomorrow morning when we hike the mountain and we don't have a jacket so got to do it here. You look cute. Yeah. It's cute. Okay. It's like sporty. Yeah. Travel tip. You don't have to bring everything with you. Umbrellas, jackets. Just buy it as you go. And it's cheap. It's like 10 bucks for a jacket. And you're supporting the local economy. Let's see if it fits. Yeah, it's a little too small. I don't like this style. 
<laughs> it's like a biker jacket. Well, Actually, this might be good. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Best okay new, new fashion. fashion. <laughs> best okay new fashion. <laughs> Number 21 style Vogue design wear best. All right, we're ready for Wang Ode. After a great day of exploring the beautiful nature and relaxing towns up north, we are heading to our little guest house to get some rest before the big day. Do you have any reservation place? Yeah, on a go to for two nights, two rooms. This is a pretty sweet spot. I mean, it's nice in here. It's clean, it's rustic, traditional. Not a bad place to spend the night, really. It's been an amazing day exploring the northern region of the Philippines. I had a blast. I'm exhausted from driving like 14 hours today. Got the charging station going over here, getting all the gear ready to go for tomorrow. We got a 4 a.m. wake up call to go meet the famous Wang Ode. See you guys in the morning. Yo, what's up, bro? Ready? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Look okay. at her, she wakes up like perfectly beautiful at 4.45. Who does that? Let's go. Behind me is a sea of clouds. Welcoming the sunrise in the morning. Absolutely amazing. God, is that you? <laughs> Babe, your country is beautiful. I know, it's amazing. What a spectacular sunrise. I mean, you can hear the roosters talking, the tuk-tuks moving, the birds chirping. Look at the clouds there. Morning! After another hour and a half of driving across the windy roads, we made it to the footsteps of Wango's village. We are looking for our local friend, Remy. It's a bit complicated because there's no phone signal here, zero. And uh, I don't know where we need to hike to. That must be her. Hi. Hi. Are you Remy? Yeah. Hi. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you arrived first before me. So which village are we hiking to uh, up we there? We go down and you, you go up. Mm. That one? Yeah. Oh, cool. Little did we know that there's a hefty hike up the mountain to reach Wangod's village, and we've just been told that she might not even be able to meet us today, which means that I can't get a tattoo, and this whole story would be scrapped. It's risky in general to come here because it all depends on her mood. That explains why tourists often have to spend two or three nights here before getting to meet her. Our hike to Wangod has just begun. Going down and up and down this beautiful countryside. How was Wang Odd? Where are the tattoos? They're, oh, they're gone. Okay. Hold my hand, you got it? Yeah. How's your balance? It's okay. It's bad. One step at a time. Along the journey to Wang O, there's a beautiful waterfall that we cross. It's just so surreal out here. How are you, man? Very happy, excited to see the legend. So you do this walk every day? Mm, most likely, yeah. This is how I make money. So. Does Wang Ho do the walk? Sometimes, if she needs to. Right, go to the hospital. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Tired? Yeah. Almost there. What's the gun for? Yeah. Guy had a big gun. I don't know why. Every step you take. <laughs> I'm so this hike is a little more difficult than expected. Whew. Oh, we're out of shape. Almost there. I can see the top. We're just about here. Babe, can you believe we made it finally? Is this the real it? Yeah. Okay. After that long oh, drive. Oh, oh, hike. We've made it. Woo! It's a cute little village. There are about 800 people living in this village called Buscalan, and they are so isolated that nobody else can understand their native language. <laughs> it is very much tribal up here, with unique faces and colorful clothing, and everyone, especially women, are proudly showing their tribal marks. This is the snake skin, yeah. Your snakes. <laughs> snake ladder and hourglass. Obviously, the, the views here, the mountains are just absurd. You can feel the presence of Wang Ode while walking around this village, and it's so charming. Her face is literally everywhere, and there's even multiple souvenir shops with merchandise to take home. While waiting for Wang Ode to wake up, we went to the one and only restaurant in town. 
cheesy hot dog. <laughs> Childhood memories? Well, th this is the uh, no, Filipino style breakfast. This is corned beef hash. This is just egg. And this is red hot dogs. Then they're juicy. I would know. So in the Philippines, they don't have knives. They just cut everything with the edge of the spoon. Oh my god. Okay. That's know. called a lot of rice. Purple rice. Sinangag. This is the way that you cut the hot dog. You just take the edge of the spoon. Filipino style. Mmm. Tender juicy. The hot dog. I'm not sure how they get it to be so red. It's food color. <laughs> Corned beef hash. Mmm. Garlicky. It's almost like a, a meatball that's smashed together. I was just told by Remy, our tour guide, that Wango is still sleeping. It's now 8.12 and she's usually awake at 7, so we hope that she's feeling okay. There's always a risk of coming here that she just doesn't want to wake up and doesn't want to see anyone, so fingers crossed because she came a long way to get here and I really don't want to have to cancel this trip in this video. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go on a little village tour and check this place out, take you guys around this really special place in the mountains. I think there's a secret to living really long life here in this village because I'm seeing a lot of old people, old faces. Believe it or not, it was a disaster to get permission to fly my drone, which never is an issue in the Philippines. The locals told me that the police would actually shoot it down from the sky like they've done with others in the past. The reason is because of tribal wars and land disputes. Remember that guy I just saw who was carrying that gun over his shoulders? I had no idea about any of this until now, so the drone needs to come down quickly before I get into trouble. Yeah, there's a conflict between Bugna and Betwagan because of the land dispute. So it's been going on for years. So what happens if you go there? They will kill you. Really? Yeah. So people are dying? Yeah. They're shooting each other in the mountain. Really? Yeah. Doesn't that make you scared? Everyone gets scared, of course, but only men can do the shooting to protect the village, to protect the women. So it's normal to hear about people shooting people? Yeah. You would think it's safe because it's the Philippines and everybody's friendly and happy. Yeah. But it's not safe. For us, because we live in Buscalan, we are safe. But the, but the people in Bugnay, of course, they feel they, they're scared. We've just been told that Wangwood is awake. She's taking a shower and we will be meeting her very soon. I've just decided now to get a tattoo. I don't know what of or where, but it'll be my third one. Just can't wait to meet her and it's such a blessing to be here. This is the waiting area where people usually sit and wait. How long have we been talking about this? Yeah, many years? Yeah. Don't be nervous. Seven years. Three dots. That's the famous one. All right, we are just seconds away from going into Wango's house and meeting her. It's going to be absolutely amazing. She's in such high demand. There's so many tourists that come here. You're from Hawaii? Yeah. You came here just for Wango? Yeah, just for Wango. What do you think about Wango? She's a legend. This is her house right here. It's a two-story building. She has the kitchen here. This bedroom over there. She eats very healthy, so you can see there's a lot of healthy dishes everywhere. So much anticipation. Mm. But you can't rush her. Having a lot of anxiety just standing here waiting because the journey was so long to get here. She's getting ready and there's like a lot of anticipation to actually meet her. I'm feeling quite nervous actually. How are you feeling? Nervous. I've always wanted to see her. And then there she was. Hi, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> She's so cute. She's taking us to a different place to get tattooed. We are going up these windy little staircases. <laughs> So we are roaming to the other side of the village to, to get our tattoos. I'm not speaking, so we're just kind of following. I don't know where we're going, but we're walking through the whole village. Take off the shoes. All right. How are you? 
<laughs> oh, I'm good. She speaks a little English. Yes. A little bit of English. Mm -hmm. My name is Drew. Diana. Diana. My wife. Asawara. Asawa. 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 <laughs> <laughs> she just gave me the high five. <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> no baby yet. No baby yet. It's a it's a really big pleasure to meet you. Do you know what year you were born? So you couldn't No, she doesn't know because there was no calendar before, so they are aware that she was born on March. If it's like now March because it's the planting time. Rice planting time. Happy birthday. <laughs> I've read articles on Wikipedia that say that you're 105. Other people say you're 80. Do you have any estimation of your actual age? Classmates before died at 109 years old, so it's like he's uh, five, five years older than her. That's where they base the age. Ah, okay. So what age does she think she is? 106. Where did your interest come from with tattoos? She likes it because her father does the tattoo. Yeah, her father did it. Mm -hmm. it the answer stores told them to get a tattoo because that tattoo stays on your skin forever. When you die, you can take it with you. How old were you when you started doing the tattoos? Around 11 years Around old. Around 11. Yes. How does it feel to be famous? You're all over the internet, including the video that I'm making right now. Everyone knows about you. Like. That didn't exist before 2007, so tell me about this life now. <laughs> She's very, very happy. And, and humble. Yeah. Very humble. All right, babe, do you want to get a tattoo? Yes. Where do you want to get it? I think in my leg. Back so, there? Yeah. I think I'm going to do it on the top of my leg. We're going to get her signature tattoos, the three dots. She's taking out all the ingredients to do the tattoo, the bamboo yeah. stick and the, the ink. Your water? So she uses water? Yeah, yeah, to mix the ink. Where is the ink from? Charcoal, uh, from the bottom of the pipe. Really? Mm. It's just charcoal? Yeah, charcoal, plain charcoal and water. It is pretty wild how the only ingredients are charcoal and water. And then she just takes a stick, a bamboo stick, and she just hits it really fast a lot of times. It's really, really special to witness this. It's something that's been on my bucket list for so many years. Diana, how many years has it been on my bucket list for? Seven years. Seven years. Uh, I'm still fangirling. But I, I've read so many articles about her and seeing her now right in front of me is an honor, such an honor. Wang Ode prefers to remove her jacket while giving tattoos so she can show off her amazing art. I mean, seriously, she takes beauty to the next level and I am so in love with her vibe and her personality. All right, so the time has come. I am now getting a tattoo from the legendary Wang Ode. I'm a little bit nervous. Oh my God, that stick is big. <laughs> it doesn't feel great. Just do my meditation. Ow. She, she's done this 10,000 times and she still laughs. <laughs> the pain of that needle being hit into my thigh thousands of times in the exact same spot was unexplainable. And Wang Ode was having the best time of her life. <sighs> <laughs> Ow, Wang Ode, you're killing me. Ow. Can I get some water, please, before I die? Mm -hmm. Well, despite the pain. Ow. It's nice to look out at the view of the hills. It's just piercing into my skin. Whew. This is my third tattoo and by far the most painful one. Um, I'm done? Yeah. With all three? Yeah. Oh, that was quick. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry that I'm such a baby. It hurts. <laughs> it's very much an honor to have this tattoo and and to meet you. Oh, I get to keep this. Is this the one that she did on me? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> wow. After every tattoo, Wang Ode gives you the bamboo stick as a souvenir to take home. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> She's adorable. She's so All right, so who's your next victim? Can me. you do my wife? Mm, yeah. Okay. It hurts, my love. Does it hurt a lot? Okay. 
So this is your <laughs> third tattoo like me. We both got our third tattoos. <laughs> Deanna, on the other hand, takes a tattoo like a champ. What does the three dots mean? Her grandchildren? Aww. That's so sweet. Wangod, how many tattoos have you given in your life? Too many, too long. Millions, <laughs> millions of tattoos. That's so cool, Deanna. It's Done? Yeah. It's really Thank cool. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did that hurt? Huh? Did it hurt? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like you. She's asking if, we have ki if we're going to have kids. Tell her in two years. Two years. <laughs> what's, uh, can you ask what's her advice for marriage life? When she she used to Yeah, you should love each other forever. Don't cheat. Don't cheat. Mm. No cheating. That's the best uh, secrets of happy marriage. Well, what I want to give this to you. <coughs> so this is my Whoa. bracelet that I got from the states. I want to give it to you. Wow, you love that bracelet. It's our heart. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> She's always laughing. Oh, that was amazing. Look at the blood that comes off on it. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> so what just happened was Wango did her signature <laughs> grab. All the tourists that come here, she she kind of does that as a as a thank you for coming. Eto maganda. Maganda. So now we're just kind of chilling. The interview's done. The tattoos are done. We're just kind of living a day in the life of the famous Wango. <laughs> <laughs> She's demanding us to have a baby. <laughs> wow, she's uh, she's not shy at all. Have you ever been married? No. Never. Really? <laughs> she doesn't like. Really? Really? <laughs> Do you ever think you're going to stop giving tattoos or you're going to keep it going until the end? When she will have an eye problem or when she doesn't see clear, she will stop. In my country, when you're 106, it's almost impossible. Apo Wangod, if you could say one message to everybody in the world, what would you tell them? Let's be happy. No stress. She wants to tell the people that everyone should be happy and she wishes that everyone has a good health. I love that. Yeah, we that's, should stay alive. <laughs> that's a nice, uh, it's really a nice message. Words cannot describe how special it has been to meet Wangod and visit her amazing village in the Filipino mountains. Her story, her artwork, and her lifestyle is so inspiring. And who knows, I could be one of the last ever to get a tattoo from her hands. There is a lot of controversy about her actual age, and as an investigative journalist myself, I think it's important to address it so we can get our facts right. She claims to be 106 years old, and every resource that I found online shows the same. But after spending a few hours with her, I have a really hard time believing she is older than 95. We will never know for sure because she doesn't have a birth certificate, but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. In any regard, I just want to say that this fashionista represents Filipino pride and she is carrying on an epic tradition of ageless art that is incredibly impressive. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next week for more stories around the Philippines. <laughs> When do you leave here to go to the city or have you ever been to the city? Eh, no. No, she has never been in the city. Never. never. Do you want to go? Te gustaría ir? Ya no. Not not now. When she was a little bit more young, yes, but not she's not interested right now in living in the city. I respect that. That's awesome. Lisa comes from the Embeda tribe of southern Panama. 
Deanna and I have spent the last 24 hours living with her community and it's been fascinating in many ways, but she has certainly caught my attention the most. Almost all of the adult members in her tribe can be seen with black geometric tattoos all over their bodies and Lisa is by far the most decorated. I quickly found out that she is a designated artist in town. How does it feel, Deanna? Good. It smells good. It smells good? Yeah. It smells like a juice. Where does the ink come from? Este árbol está grande, alto. The fruit is coming from a huge, big tree, a tall tree. So the collecting of the jagua, the seed the, that makes it the ink, uh, is a job for the men. But the prepare the, the ink is by the women. They use this artifact and prepare it, then squeeze it, and it's ready to to put in the in the ink. The design usually are geometrical designs. Mm -hmm. It has no meaning exactly. It's just by their ancestors. The ink is not permanent. It stays for a few weeks, but nonetheless, it's incredibly stylish and everyone does it. There are a few main reasons why the Emberas tattoo themselves. First and foremost, tradition and beauty. Their ancestors have been passing down this technique for centuries and they are very proud of how it makes them unique. In the beginning was depending of the shamans. When they used to make a health ritual for any person, they said if, okay, this is a bad spirit and need a monkey or need a snake or a jaguar, each of these designs has a meaning. Depending of what the shaman asks, they make the design of the rituals. Uh, the shaman is like a spiritual doctor. Historically, the Emberas uses fruit ink to camouflage in the jungle when they were in conflict with other tribes. And while that doesn't happen anymore, they use it in modern day as a sunscreen and shampoo. As Lisa tells me, it gives them shiny and healthy hair filled with vitamins and minerals. It's truly been a pleasure to spend time with Lisa and her community and learn about their amazing traditions. It's experiences like these that I value the most about travel and I can't wait to see more. What makes you happy in life? Bueno, con mi familia, me hace feliz cuando yo estoy todo con mis hijos, yo estoy feliz. What makes her happy is her family. When, uh, when she is sharing with her family, sons, husband and friends, what makes her happy in the life is the family. This is Sarah. And I recreate love stories through the art of henna. Yeah. <laughs> so I was born in Karachi. And I moved to Hong Kong when I was about seven years old, and I've lived in Hong Kong since then. So I'm born Karachi, I have Chinese nationality, I do not look Chinese at all. <laughs> As the first thing immigration officers asked me, they're like, Chinese? You're not Chinese. Were you always an artist from birth, or did you get inspired, or how did you start with art? So I think my mind works in nothing else but art. <laughs> all throughout my childhood, I love to draw, paint, all throughout school I did art as a subject and even in university that was my degree. As far as henna art is concerned, um, I used to watch my mom. She used to apply henna for brides and I used to just get inspired and started practicing. And I've been doing henna for, well, as long as I can remember now. What is your experience so far having a henna tattoo? It's amazing! It's my first time and I cannot believe that this is in my hands right now. Like, I can't. I've been following you guys for about five years now, so I'm doing a little portrait that I like the best of the two of you as well. Just a rough sketch so I can kind of get an idea of what I want to do on the hand. My first bride was when I was 10 years old. Well, I started my business, Sarah's Henna, in Hong Kong around 15 years ago. And it was the first business of its kind in Hong Kong. The Chinese people, the locals, had no idea what it actually was. And I explained it to them as a form of traditional temporary tattooing. I'm so glad that I don't have any reactions from henna. Is this natural? Oh yeah, uh, this is 100% natural organic henna that I make at home. So basically in Pakistan and in India as well, in the local markets you get chemical cones and they're really bad for your skin. So I started making organic henna. I roll these cones myself. 
um, and I now supply this all over Pakistan. So what makes Sarah's henna stand out from all the other henna artists? So basically I started the love story henna concept about five, six years ago now. And all it is is that I just ask the bride or my client, you know, what their story is. So for example, for Diana, I wanted it to represent her time in Karachi. Hence why there's all these bespoke elements. Well, we start with the camel ride, because I saw it on your Insta stories. So we've got it there with Drew and Diana with her hair flying. <laughs> I know you guys have been really inspired by truck art. Yes. And it's something very traditional, mm -hmm. Pakistani. So these are the kind of things that make up my bridal henna. When I first started doing it, there was nobody else doing this concept. But now, of course, with social media, it's incredible, like brides all over the world ask for it and artists, there are some amazing artists who do the same thing now and they do it 100 times better than me, honestly. Okay, so my standard rate for bespoke designs, the Love Story Henna, is 1000 US. I fly worldwide for this and it covers both arms till the elbows and feet up to the knees. What are a few countries that you've flown to for work? Oh my god. Okay, I've been to Europe, uh, all over Asia, UK, Australia, Hong Kong, um, and now Pakistan. Sarah is one of the many hardworking women in the world who don't get enough credit for their entrepreneurial spirit. Not only is she a talented artist, but she's a fantastic person and a pleasure to spend the afternoon with in Karachi.